Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can make this cheese material in Octane and how you can add those holes in Cinema 4D to make anything looks like a cheese. Before we start, I want to show you what I have in the settings and in the scene. In the scene, I have the object itself, which I will go into much more detail in a second. I have here HDRI and floor without any material applied. In the settings, I have path tracing kernel and I recommend you to use this in this case with max samples of 2000 you can go with more if you have still noise in your scene the diffuse depth is set to 64 and also scatter depth is set to 64 it's really important to keep them both in the same value because if we go here with the scatter depth of one and we can adjust the diffuse depth now but there is no difference at all and also it goes other way around if we go here we also don't get much of a difference so 64 here and 64 here is the minimum to make it looks really nice with all those light scattering inside of the object you can go with more even with 2056 but this will also make way more light scatter inside of the subsurface scattering material so you probably want to adjust the color now because it's get a bit more orange i will go with 64 in both just so it's a bit faster the specular depth is set to 16 it doesn't really matter in this case if i will have here some kind of metallic material i could um, crank it up slightly other settings are set to default aspect the gi clamp which you can set to let's say five just don't go too low and also you can enable the adaptive sample to get a bit faster rendering here okay that's it for the settings and the scene now we can start making our material i will start from deleting the previous object here and material so we can make it from zero okay i will pause the live viewer for now so it doesn't affect my viewport here and let's add cylinder here i will scale it down and adjust it so it looks like a cheese something around five centimeters of height and let's say 10. now we want to go to the slice enable the slice and type in something around 135 degree which will result in this nice shape and let's go to the cups also before we go to the cups we can enable the lines here so we can see what's going on with our shape and let's take a look at the back and let's enable the fillet with the fillet we want to go with radius of around 0.5 maybe something around this maybe will work really nice and let's bump up the segments so it's later more smooth in a volume builder and also we want to go back here to object and crank up the rotation segments here okay that looks really good now we can add volume builder let's add our cylinder to it and in this particular scale i will go with 0.5 or even 0.3 of course you need to adjust it to your scale so best idea is to go step by step lower till it looks something like this and now we want to add cloner also we want to apply spheres to the cloner and scale down the cloner till it looks fine something around this size seems to be just fine in a cloner i will change the mode to object and our object will be the cylinder here this will scatter our small spheres around our cheese to make those holes and we want to crank up the sphere segments just to make sure there is no visible polygons later on when we add a volume measure i think we can go with this distribution but we can change the distribution by changing the seed so i will just try to get something more interesting i think that looks really good now we can apply it to the volume builder here and in the volume builder we want to change the cloner mode to subtract this will work like a boolean and cut out those spheres in a shape we had before now we can add volume measure here and apply our volume builder to volume measure and see the result density is a bit too low so we need to fix it I will lower the voxel size even more to 0.1 and now we have a bit more defined look over the cheese. I will also disable the lines so we can now see the shape itself and there's a few things we can change now. First of all, I will go to the funk tag here and disable the angle limit to prevent those really overly sharp lines and in the volume builder also i will add sdf smooth and change the strength to maybe 10 or 5 percent just to smooth out those jagged edges here around i think we can go even more with the voxel size so i will go with 0.05 again you need to adjust it to your scale so don't go too wild because it will crash your Cinema 4D. And because we changed the voxel size, we can now bump up the smooth slightly more to maybe even 15%. 
and this looks good enough the thing is our cheese now is really dense here so we can use remesher here and apply our volume measure to remesh and this should fix our uh, issue with the density of these polygons and also slightly smooth out our object so right now it looks pretty good we can make few adjustments here so we can for example check the keep creases and lower the mesh density to maybe 50 percent let's disable the lines here and it looks really good but yeah i will keep it at 50 percent and we can now just connect objects and delete and we have our mesh here of course we lose the ability to edit it but we have simple mesh without any additional stuff to process underneath and i think that's it for the object itself we can now start making our material so i will bring back the live viewer here and just adjust the camera slightly so we can see a bit more of the cheese okay so Let's go to create extension C for the octane and octane material. Let's apply it to our object and let's double click at the material. And in here we want to click at the node editor. And in the node editor we want to click at the material here. And in the first step we will go into the basic and change the material type to universal and BRDF model to GGX energy preserving. And albedo will go all the way down. Next step will be roughness. We can add here something like 0.2 or 0.3 of roughness. I will go with 0.3. Next step is EOR. In EOR, you want to add something between 1.4 and 1.5. I'll go with 1.5 to get a bit more reflection here. In a transmission, we want to go with the specular and full white. Next step will be adding random walk in the medium. And to actually make use out of the random walk, you need to set an a common in the octa material, fake shadows. This way the random walk will actually benefit the most. So in the random walk, we can change the albedo color to something like 45. Let's see how it looks like. Something like this for now. We need to change a few things. Right now it looks more like a glass or plastic. We need to adjust density here, maybe 1000. 1000 already looks really good. So I will just change the color slightly to less orange, something like this. Also, what I like to do here is change the bias in this particular material all the way to zero. And in this case, it will make things a bit more orange. So I will just recompensate that by changing the color to something like this. And I think it's a bit too saturated. So I will lower slightly the color here. And we can compare now the bias of zero and bias of 0 0.5. And here's the difference. Of course, the color is different because um, that's the thing you need to compensate in here. But you can see how in those two holes, you can see a bit more light going through. It just looks a bit better in my uh, in my opinion. So I'll definitely will choose always the zero in this case. And also it works really well with bigger numbers here. We can also compare it here. Let it render for a second. Let's compare it. And let's change the bias here to 0 0.5. And here's the difference. Of course, again, we need to recompensate the orange color here because, again, we boost up the depth of diffuse and scatter. So let's do it. Something like this. But yeah, let's go back to 64 because it's too slow right now. And that's the main base for this material. We can also add a few details. Let me actually change the angles here slightly so we can get those reflection on a cheese and just to see the bump. And there's a few things we, we can do here. So we'll add here octane noise and in octane noise. The first step will be to just make it a bit more uneven, not flat. So let's add projection and transform here. The projection will go with the box and I will just lower the omega. I just wanted to keep it really simple. I will scale it down and change the power here till it looks just fine something around this is what we're looking for i want to lower the power again to make it more subtle something like 0.15 i think will work maybe 0.1 now we want to add mix here and let's attach it to the texture one and let's add another octane noise we can actually go with the amount of full one just to see this noise now and we can solve node it and add projection transform of course in the projection let's change it to box again and in the transform we want to lower the scale till we see our noise and uncheck the log aspect ratio now let's just scale up just one slider and we'll get those streaks here we can now check it back and adjust the overall scale 
and let's disable the cell node now and we get those lines here which looks kind of like streaks from cutting cheese with a knife we just need to rotate it slightly so it's a bit more random something like this and of course we can tell it to too visible so let's go with uh, lower power here of 0.1 maybe and also for me personally the turbulence work really well here and we can change a few things based on the, this uh, image so let's disable it again let's make it a bit longer power seems to be still too big so i will lower it again to 0 0.01 we can also try inverting it and maybe changing the contrast and gamma to get a bit different result. This looks fine. I will now bring back the amount in the mix to 0 0.5. So it's mix it with noise that we have here. It seems like we need to compensate that mix here by adding a bit more power here. So yeah, this looks good. And we can now also add another octane noise. And with this one, we will make small holes in the cheese. So I will just mix it like this and connect it this one to the bump. Let's still note this noise. And of course, we need to change the texture projection to box. And in transform, we need to scale it down quite a lot, something like this. And in the noise, we'll go with maybe chips here. And what we're looking for is something like this, where we get a bit of those small black dots on white background. You can try different also types here. I think the circular actually looks better. We're looking for something like this. We can also uh, lower the contrast now slightly, just slightly because it's now a bit too much. And we can change the power slightly to make it a bit less visible, something like this. And what it does is just make a few imperfections here and there, as you can see here, few dots just to make it a bit more realistic. And because we mix it here, we need to again recompensate those changes here. So I will make all of those stuff slightly more visible. And of course, if you will spend a bit more time refining those, you will get a really nice results. Let's actually now change the camera to see it at a different angle. We have nice looking cheese. You can also, there's also last step you can do. So basically, if we solo this mix texture here, all of those things are also applied in the, in the holes, but we want the holes to be perfect. So we can add curvature here, add multiply node after the mix texture here and add curvature here let's now sell node the multiply and we need to do a few things here in a curvature to actually make it work nice first of all we need to invert it here and in here we want to change a few things so we want to change the mode to concavity we can boost the strength we can already see the difference here and maybe the radius slightly uh, also the curvature is a bit different in octane sometimes you need to just take the offset move it out and back just so it's in the right position it's a bit weird but let's go to the uh, include object mode and change it to self and let's just adjust it till it looks right Something like this. We're looking for this result where the black is inside of those holes. We can also add here a gradient after the invert and crank up the black here and maybe a bit of white just to make sure there is no leftovers here. And let's disable the cell node and it's, well, it will not be visible in this case, but in some cases where the light will be visible inside of those holes, it will make a difference. And I think that's it for this tutorial. Hope you find it entertaining and you learned something new today. If you like my tutorials, be sure to subscribe. My goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week. Also, you can find me on Instagram, where I'm usually posting ahead what my next tutorial will be about. And I think that's it. See ya.